Hello, you're very welcome to this episode of Filling the Sink, a podcast from Catalan News. My name's Lorcan Doherty, and today we're talking about award-winning animators Grangel Studio. It all starts with a sketch, a scribble, a spark in the mind of Carlos Grangel. Creating something from nothing, the Barcelona-born artist has worked on some of the biggest animated feature films of the last decades, from The Prince of Egypt, through Madagascar and Kung Fu Panda, to most recently the Oscar-winning Pinocchio from Guillermo del Toro. Coming up, we have an interview with Carlos Grangel on collaborating with top Hollywood directors, never working on sequels, and speaking Spanglish to Steven Spielberg. Here with me on the podcast today is Gerard Escatchfolk. Hello, Gerard. Hello. I'm so excited today. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was your idea to do this podcast because the films that Grangel Studio have worked on are really well known, but you wouldn't say that, you know, Carlos Grangel is a household name exactly. So how did you come across him? Well, it all started the day after the Oscars. Uh, here in Barcelona, a lot of media outlets were talking about a studio, an, an animation studio that was part of an award-winning Oscar movie. And I was like, well, that's so interesting. And I started searching and turns out Grangel Studio was part of the team that made Pinocchio, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, the movie for Netflix, possible. So it won Best Animated Feature Film. And the interesting thing is that Grangel Studio had a really specific role. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were the character designers for the main characters of Pinocchio. Pinocchio? And Geppetto. Right, okay, so Pinocchio, if you don't, I'm sure, well, I don't need to explain the story, everyone knows, so Pinocchio and, and his dad, his creator. And yeah, it's, it's interesting because obviously animated films, you can just imagine them, this massive collaborative effort, but it was here in Barcelona that they, they designed those characters, who so distinctive as well, mm -hmm. if you have seen it. And it all started in 2010, so like, it's not been like a one-year project, they've been working on this for like more than a decade, uh -huh. because there was like, well, because of lack of funding, until Netflix came and decided to invest in the project. And then they decided to work on this movie. And because Guillermo del Toro's dream was to make it a stop motion, using stop motion technique, Grangel Studio decided to join the project because that's the technique that they most like. So after all this media attention for the Oscars, you thought, well, Catalan News better get in on that too. And you gave him a call. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that he told me and that I was surprised at the moment is that they hadn't watched the ceremony. They didn't watch it? No. no. They said that the truth is that you cannot control anything about the awards. So, yeah, they decided to let it go, let it be. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure they had a few texts and calls, you know, whenever, yeah. the, whenever the news came through. And one of the things that he told me is that it was a miracle for a stop motion animation movie to win the best animation feature film award. Interesting. So you spoke to Carlos Grangel after his Oscar win and decided, well, you should do like a longer interview with him for the podcast for Fill in the Sink. So that's what we've got for you today. Uh, but Carlos, actually, he doesn't work alone. Uh, it's a team of two at Grangel Studio. Mm -hmm. It's Carlos and Jordi, both surnamed Grangel as they are siblings. They decided to found the studio in 1995 and they split the roles quite evenly. Carlos focuses on illustrating, creating the designs, character designing, and Jordi brings them to life because he's a not kind of a sculptor, but similar. He works with 3D modeling to make those drawings a reality. Yeah, so the studio is focused on character design and also developing the style of the movie. Yeah, exactly. You've seen the poster of a movie, you've seen the title, you've seen the logos. Well, that's what they also do. Someone has to come up with, you know, how the title is going to look. Exactly. So they design the fonts, the credits, the feel that the movie will have. And they've worked on countless really well-known animated films. You kind of grew up with them, Gerard. <laughs> I did. So that's why I was so excited about this podcast <laughs> because it's like all my childhood in front of me with movies and movies and movies. Go on, tell us about some of your favorites. Well, obviously, Corpse Bride, Tim Burton's Corpse Bride is one of the most interesting ones that I've always liked and watched and rewatched again. It's funny because you, you watch it and you think, oh, that's very much Tim Burton's style. But, you know, it is. But also it has this hand of, mm -hmm. of Grangel Studio there. And they, they did the... We talked about how they do titles for films and they did all the fonts for, for this mm -hmm. one as well. Yeah, yeah. And it was in 2005. And when I was preparing for this podcast, I was like, wait, 
no, they did this movie. I was like, what? I <laughs> like, I, like, I cannot believe that they also worked on Madagascar. Madagascar, which is from DreamWorks, and they've had a long and very fruitful collaboration with mm -hmm. DreamWorks specifically. Yeah, in fact, uh, Grangel Studios started working with DreamWorks from day one as they worked on P Prince of Egypt, one of the biggest movies DreamWorks has ever produced, as well as Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, Ants, Shark Tale, B-Movie... The list goes on. DreamWorks, of course, co-founded by Steven Spielberg, along with Jeffrey Katzenberg and David Geffen, and, you know, really shook up the animation mm -hmm. industry in the in the 90s when it kind of came on the scene. I mean, it's some list of works just looking through them. There's actually one there, Spirit, which... <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen as many as you, but I have seen this. I remember I, was, I think it was a slightly hungover day, and uh, me and my partner were like, the most that we could probably manage is a animated film about horses, like, without <laughs> much uh, uh, dialogue. So, uh, very nice, you know? And very distinctive style as well, you know? Yes. Looking back, no, I have to say. Yeah, in fact, that movie won in 2002. It won the Annie Award, which is... Like the Oscars for the animation industry for character design and becoming the first time the award was won by a studio, Grangel Studio, based outside of the United States. There we go. So I watched the award winning Spirit. It's on Netflix if you ever find yourself in a situation like myself where you might want to watch it. Let's hear from Carlos Grangel then, Jared. You went along to visit him in the studio. It's quite an interesting place. And yes, like it's kind of a flat for people to imagine the place but it's full of sketches drawings colors like <laughs> thousands of designs how you might imagine an illustrator's workshop to, it, f it fulfills the cliche of yeah. like just paper everywhere and yeah, bottles colors, and pencils paintbrushes so just w whenever inspiration hits you know carlos can just grab something or jordi and th mm -hmm. they're ready to go they even have sculptures Okay, well, let's listen to your interview with Carlos then. And you began by asking how Grangel Studio started. We were first artists that we had the drive for, illustrate and do comic strips. And then we studied animation many years ago and then we decided to go for animation. Our passion went from making scribbles and comic strips and illustration into creating the look of films. You've been working for over 40 years now. Have you worked here in Barcelona or your majority of work is outside? Majority of work is, is for the US and UK market and then Germany, Japan, France and some work for Italy and very little for Spain and very little for Catalonia because the industry, it's, it's small. Actually, 35 years ago, the, the question was, we, we need to survive, so we need to find work. So work wasn't coming from here, so we had to go and, and visit the biggest places of all. And, and obviously, when we went into the U.S. market, it was incredible, the opportunities that we could get. It was difficult, but we succeeded, and we got some some work and we got great exposure and we haven't shown our portfolio for, for 30 years. People come to us, people call us and we basically don't look for work because obviously after having done two or three feature films, people know you. Is it the director that comes to you? Do you compete against other graphic designers and animation studios? In our case, we are very fortunate. We are privileged that studios and directors call us, call Barcelona Grangel Studio. They want us to create the style for a new movie. So the first step is, what's the story about? Can you send the script? Can we talk? Shall we meet? It's not about who is directing sometimes. It's more about what is the story about? Because we don't do sequels. We don't do second parts because... Life is too short to repeat yourself, so we are always creating original movies, working for new directors. We had worked with 42 different directors, big names, obviously, Barton, Katzenberg, Spielberg, Del Toro, etc. And smaller or medium names, but we, we actually are open to, to work with new young directors and veterans. If we like the story, we go ahead and try to make the movie. 
you mentioned you don't do sequels is that like so you only do one movie and then you move on to another project or you don't like if there was a second project for a movie you worked on would you like continue or you would like give up the, the question you understood correct my friend we don't do any sequels at all it doesn't matter who is the director it doesn't matter how is the paycheck we don't repeat our stories we are creative people we want to be challenged And with all my respect, a sequel for us is not interesting. So even if they pay $1 million, we're not going to do it. That's clear. That's bottom line. That started this way, Grangela Studio. And some studios didn't understand that. And they were not very happy to hear when they came to us for the second part or third part. But they finally understood. We're creative people. We're not going to enjoy working two years on something we had created before. So the style is something that you do once and then you move on. How does the creative process work? Like, do you sit down and start imagining or is it just like ideas come up? Here is the thing. When we get a project, we want to meet with the director, no matter where is it. Uh, so if we have to fly to Los Angeles, we take the first flight to Los Angeles in the morning. If we have to be in New York, we go to New York. If it has to be in London, Paris, Tokyo or Munich, uh, we move. And then we have a good talk with the director. We, we hear what he has in mind because sometimes the director hasn't wrote the script, you know. And then it's, it starts a process of one month in Grangela Studio just brainstorming, getting reference, making small sketches, trying to find out what can be the look, so the visual look of the characters, backgrounds, props. Uh, we try to have a a poster, we have to have the lettering, like the movie was finished, you know, so just a look. And then we do a presentation four or five weeks later of what we have in mind. But obviously all this presentation is along the lines of what the director information gave us. And we don't want to go far from his vision. If it's Tim Barton, we have to respect it. If it's Del Toro, He has a vision, it's different from Tim, so so each director is different. So sometimes goes well, sometimes so-so. The director will say, okay, I like this, but I don't like that, I dislike this thing, but this keep on going, keep cre being creative. And then we may work between six months and three years, depending what kind of show they want to do. Obviously, after so many projects, you have many anecdotes. What's the moment that you said, Wow, this, I will always remember this. I remember an anecdote um, when I just started in London that Steven Spielberg came in to the studio and he came straight to my room. And obviously I was just a, a young artist starting there and he asked me to go on, to, to go for Stig Higner, one of the producers, and... Uh, And I said, Stephen, I just, <laughs> I barely, I was talking English, you know, so, so on my really Spanglish, I said, I'm sorry, I'm new here. I don't know where, where the producer is right now. So, so it was funny. But after two weeks, I could present to Stephen the work that we were working on. Uh, and I remember he's saying, we have a designer now, it's going to be Carlos. So from that day, I was a character designer in animation. You mentioned several directors. How does it work? How, how is it to work with some of the biggest directors in the world? Well, every, every one of these directors is there because uh, he knows what he's doing and is something, you know. So more than 20 years I've been helping DreamWorks Animation from the beginning. It's been phenomenal. And over there I learned how to become a better artist. So. I believe there were some directors really good that I expected more and they didn't have the opportunity. Sometimes it's to be there at the, at the best time, on the best spot. You know what I'm saying? In life, a bit of luck helps, you know. I must say that the people that they have big names, it's easy to work than, than people that they start on the first movie. That's, that's for sure. Why is that? Insecurities. Insecurity is lots of people that they are in first movie with people that they are more experienced than them. For example, right now we are working with young directors. 
we are veterans. For them, it's kind of intimidating to have these designers that they have been in the industry for 40 years and they just started this first movie, you know, first, second, third year in the industry. So sometimes they are trying to pretend they know everything and, and we have to be careful and not uh, patronizing them. You know what I'm saying? Not trying to, we have to talk a language of respect. We have to have patience and, and listen to what they have to say. The older we get, <laughs> The trickier it works, you know. I wanted to ask you about the design. Does it all happen here? Because obviously animation nowadays it's mainly driven by computers. Do you make the designs here and send them abroad to the producer or how does it work? The houses The main studios, from DreamWorks to Pixar, Sony, Paramount, uh, Warner Brothers, Illumination, etc., etc., they have their own teams, and we share work with them. So we are part external of their teams, like freelancers. And sometimes we are working on the with the teams there. Not one designer creates the style. Sometimes there are teams of two or three designers. Here we have two or three designers, but maybe we are sharing design with other teams in the US or in the UK or in Japan. So it's very important to be a team worker. And sometimes I lead on my designs and sometimes someone leads. Well, it's important that at the end, a film, it has a very strong style. But the most important thing, no matter what, it needs a strong story. So story is the main thing. I've been so fortunate and lucky on many projects to mention Prince of Egypt, to mention Spirit, to mention Cars Bride, being at the beginning on Pinocchio, at the beginning on Madagascar or Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, Hotel Transylvania. The drive at the beginning, when you are starting, is like uh, playing with the balls of Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Working with the best. Playing for Barca of Guardiola with Messi. You know what I'm saying? When you feel like, hey, I'm with the most skilled people around the planet. It's like when you say, wow, we have to match expectations. There is no moment to fail. That was Carlos Grangel of Grangel Studio talking to Gerard. Me? You, talking to you. Uh, the thing that stuck out for me is the fact that they don't work on sequels. Right. And I mean, it was funny listening to you. You did a bit of a double take too. Like you couldn't, <laughs> it couldn't also quite, surprised me. <laughs> you couldn't quite believe it. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's very noble in a way, isn't it? You know, Hollywood, especially these days, it seems to be it's all about sequels and cinematic universes and mm -hmm. you know i suppose guaranteed money in the bank and and grandiel studio are kind of swimming against that tide so fair play to them yeah well it makes sense when he said it at the beginning i was like what wait what i was surprised but then i was i realized it's like it's obvious like character design once the character is designed it, it's the, the same, same design for the sequels too. yeah exactly I mean, so, there might be new characters or whatever but yeah it's 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 a, it's a kind of Brave in a way, they're they're turning down money as freelancers, but well, I guess they're not struggling for business if you see all the films they've worked on anyway. And just that process that he mentioned as well of when they start, they've got one month of brainstorming, coming up with all the ideas. And I was listening, going, "Oh, that sounds that sounds brilliant!" Like a month brainstorming, but then it's actually a hell of a lot of work because if you look at their website, you can see all the preliminary sketches they do and all the details and different mm -hmm. versions and different designs the website is grandgelstudio.com and it really is worth just going in and looking through we've been looking through them having a bit of fun mm -hmm. there's a few stand out I enjoyed the Madagascar ones <laughs> like the ones from Alex the Lion like all those main proposals that they had sketches the squares circles triangles I was like wow really distinctive shapes and then when you look at the one what they actually went with in the end Alex the Lion and Madagascar does have a really distinctive main but Some of the other ones were ridiculous. Like that. <laughs> yeah, um, the, uh, it's fascinating. There's loads of detail in Corpse Bride, for example, Tim Burton's Corpse Bride for the Black Widow Spider. They did loads of different versions with two eyes, six eyes, eight eyes, short legs, long legs, and it's just fascinating to see how it's all worked through. You know, <laughs> and have you seen the sketches for Poe? For Poe, 
who's Paul? Kung, Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda. I have seen the Kung Fu Panda sketches. They're they're actually amazing because there's about. I don't thousands. Know, 50 <laughs> well, <laughs> not thousands but don't, it feels like but there's like 50 of his head and there's another 50 of all the different uh, you know kung fu poses and it's amazing because <laughs> obviously it's a big fat panda doing all these poses but yeah the detail and uh, uh, you know what looking at those ones you can tell that they had fun doing it well you know? that's one of the things he said during the interview that they are creative people and they have fun and like you can when I was there you could feel that they are not children but they act like like <laughs> one because, like exactly because they work for children and they are very fun and i was like i really enjoyed the time there yeah yeah and one of the things that they told me while i was there is about pinocchio and they decided to create a a hole for the cricket in pinocchio's bell jiminy cricket no, no, no. Sebastian J. Cricket. Ah, that's right. Sorry, yeah. So the, the, there's a different name. Sebastian J. Cricket. So a little nod, I presume, to Jiminy, maybe under <laughs> Disney copyright or something. So, so yeah, when once the character was designed and everything, they decided to change the place of Sebastian from the belly to the heart. Right. Okay. So little little changes as they work through it. I mean, I just find it fascinating seeing all the sketches because I, like, I am absolutely terrible at art, like to a level where I couldn't even draw a stick figure. And to see sometimes, because even just with like, I don't know, five or six pencil strokes, you can see, oh, that's Kung Fu Panda. They're the main character from Kung Fu Panda. I don't know how, how they did and, it. And you amazing. know who was also fascinating by their work? Who? Tim Burton. Tim Burton, well, yeah, I'm in good company. Well, yeah, obviously they worked on The Corpse Bride together, but before that movie was even a project, Tim Burton went to a doll-making workshop in Manchester, which is the same one that uh, Grangel Studio u- used for a short movie, The Periwig Maker, and Burton liked the dolls because they resemble his style, so he got in touch with Grangel Studio. That's a funny coincidence, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Their website also features some of the other things that they work on. You know, we mentioned the logos, typefaces, and they came up with the the font for Gladiator. Yeah. Have you seen the different sketches? I know, it's it's, it's funny. The the alternatives don't look right at all. Yeah, we are so used to the final one that that it's so complicated to get to used to other options. And do we know what's next for Grand Hell Studio? Well, I cannot talk a lot about it because while I was at their studio, they had posters and drawings of the next characters hanging on the walls and they told me please don't Do, mention anything don't about take this. any photos <laughs> yeah but i can say it's two movies okay and people should go to the cinemas often oh, right okay I, I, you know my hunch is that at least one of them is a dreamworks movie you know well once we're off mic i'm gonna i'm gonna drill you further <laughs> Time now for our Catalan phrase. What's it this week, Gerard? Tani la paella pal manac. To have the paella by... I don't know what the manac is. Manac is handle, and it's not paella like the food, it's the pan. Ah, of course, right. So Catalan paella, the word just means any kind of pan. Exactly. So to have the pan by the handle. Exactly. Which means... To have everything under control, uh-huh. to be good at what you do, or even if you want to ask for who's the boss. Who's in charge. Who's in charge. You can say, who who, who has the who has the pan by the handle. Exactly. Okay. Tani la paella palmanic. That's it for today then. Thanks very much for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Grandgelstudio.com if you want to check out their work. And do check out catalannews.com as well for a video uh, of Gerard's interview with Carlos. Our thanks to Carlos for speaking to us this week. And thanks to you as well, Gerard. It's always a pleasure. We've got a new episode of Filling the Sink out next weekend, as always. It's San Jordi next weekend, big day in Catalonia. Until then, for me, Lorcan Doherty, and all of us here at Catalan News, bye for now, adieu.